Criteria 1.2 of Unit 1 looks at the key principles and concepts in the internal quality assurance process. Now concepts mean ideas that an IQA should uphold day to day, whereas principles are taking those ideas and putting them into practice. Behind me are some key concepts uh, an IQA should uphold. Uh, for more information, please look at pages 94 and 95 within the textbook. Now, some of the, the key concepts is firstly competence. As an IQA, you are going to be regarded as someone who's got expert knowledge regarding your field. It's very important to pass the latest information to your trainers and assessors to ensure that their own uh, knowledge is up to date and current as well. There are some um, key ways that you can promote uh, your competence. This could be attending the latest workshops, uh, seminars by uh, your rewarding body, or it could just mean um, signing up to any email updates as well, and perhaps sharing uh, those updates uh, with your colleagues through meetings or one-to-one -one, uh, daily chats as well, simply emailing uh, your colleagues the latest updates uh, is demonstrating your competence there. Following on from competence, we have communication. So a good hallmark of any IQA is to ensure clear communication. This is a imperative for uh, meetings, standardization meetings. Um, it could be att uh, attending or arranging reviews as well. Furthermore, with any IQA, we need to promote standardization. This is taking part within activities such as creating new products, new policies, uh, new schemes of work. It could be looking at learner uh, sample work as well to ensure standardization um, across assessment decisions. It could also be looking at key issues such as disputes, recent appeals, and it's an opportunity for your trainers or assessors to discuss their experiences to promote understanding um, of the assessment process so far. But standardisation is important for you as an IQA to arrange. Further key concepts are health and safety. Within the planning stage of the IQA process, it is important to conduct uh, risk assessments, to take stock of any equipment and material going to be used within the IQA process. So having a good knowledge of the Health and Safety at Work Act, um, who are the uh, appointed first aiders, for example, and also checking to see whether your assessors know how to conduct perhaps a risk assessment prior to any assessment. So having an excellent knowledge of health and safety is key here. You might even need to create uh, your very own risk assessment for your course or qualification. Uh, another key concept is the Equality and Diversity Act of 2010. Um, within the IQA process, it's vital that we are there to support uh, each individual learner's needs and also our assessor's needs as well. Okay, so within this section, we're thinking about how we can support um, our learners. It could be to perhaps conduct a suitable initial assessment to see if they have any uh, individual needs. Um, it could be signposting our learners to relevant uh, bodies as well if we can't support their needs in hand. Um, and for you as well, it could be um, acknowledging that um, learners have individual needs and letting certain awarding bodies know to request perhaps extra time or a reader or scribe perhaps. These are some of the key concepts and for your assignment, we are looking for you to reflect on five key concepts. We would like for you to write um, each one in turn and what they mean, but we would also like for you to apply an example for each. So you reflecting either on your current IQA role or your future IQA role here. But five key concepts are what is needed for this criteria.